Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today, I am going to be painting barn and birdhouse, and I'm going to be sipping on a little Pinot Grigio. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so the materials today, I'm going to be using a stretch and prime 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'll be using acrylic paint. The colors I'm using today are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I'll probably call rust, green oxide, chrome yellow, and magenta. And again, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using three brushes. I'm gonna use a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. And I'll probably refer to these as small, medium, and large. And again, you can switch up those sizes, but that's what I'm gonna be using. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll also need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And below the um, video in the description, I'm gonna be providing, be providing you with a whole bunch of links. One of them is a link where you can buy a complete kit that has all of these materials that you'll need for um, this particular project, including a portable easel, um, as well as the paints and the canvas and all your brushes and stuff. And you certainly can get them online or at your local craft store, but we've got a convenient kit for you if you'd like that we'll provide you with a link to. And I'm gonna provide you with a link to a downloadable image of the painting. So you can print that and use it as a visual reference as you go along, as well as written step-by-step -step instructions. So those you can certainly print as well. And that's all you're gonna need. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step, we're gonna use our bristle brush. We're gonna be doing the sky and it's gonna come about a quarter of the way down your canvas. So I don't use any fancy, fancy measuring tools, I'm just gonna eyeball it. So if this is about halfway, then I'm gonna go about a quarter of the way. I'm gonna use blue and white on my brush at the same time to start. I like my horizon to get lighter as it comes down, so I'm probably just gonna use blue in the beginning, and then every time I go to pick up more paint, I'm just gonna pick up white. And what'll happen is my sky is gonna get lighter and lighter as I come down. So that's kind of my first go around. Now I'm just picking up white. And what'll happen is I'll get these light spots and dark spots, and it's almost gonna emulate little like light clouds kind of floating by. Um, but you can certainly make yours darker or lighter. Um, whatever you wanna do is totally up to you. And again, I'm only gonna come about a quarter of the way down. So if this was my halfway point, this is about a quarter of the way, so I'm gonna come a little bit further down. And you can certainly mark it at any time if you wanna um, make sure that that's as far down as you come. And then I'm just gonna kinda of keep going across, even if it's almost on the white side, I'm cool with that because a lot of times when the sun is nice and bright on a beautiful day, the sky sometimes almost looks white or a very, very pale blue. So that's why I'm gonna do it this way. And then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So when you get this all nice and painted in, uh, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're using the same brush. We're gonna be doing the main land area. So this is gonna take up half of your canvas. Um, I'm gonna be using two colors. I'm gonna be using green and rust or burnt sienna. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use a very little bit of paint and I'm gonna almost scrub it onto the canvas. So in a kind of a circular fashion, I'm gonna be rubbing it or scrubbing it and I alternate picking up color. So I just picked up rust. I started with green, then I went to rust. Now I go back into green and I'm overlapping my sections. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a really nice um, earthy type coloration 
in this area. And if you want it a little bit more autumn looking, then you can use more of the rust color. If you want it more summery looking, use more of the green color. And then as I get up towards my sky, I want this to be an uneven um, kind of a tree line. So I'm going to just brush it a little bit into the sky, but I wanna make sure that I leave it uneven. So when you get up to that sky part, you just wanna leave it uneven. You can have some low spots and some high spots. You can go right into your sky, but I would kind of be a little bit cautious if, you know, make sure your sky is pretty dry before you start painting on top of it. Um, and I'm just gonna keep going until I get this entire area covered. Again, I am alternating colors on my brush without washing my brush in between. Um, and one thing that I have noticed when um, people are attempting to do this step you want to avoid scrubbing too hard because it may pull the, the paint right off of your canvas. So you do want to have almost like a dry brush or a scrubbing type technique, but you don't want to over scrub in the same spot. Um, otherwise you might end up with kind of like a ring around the paint. Um, so just, you know, scrub, but just use not all the muscle that you have. Um, and then you just keep going. And if you do get one of those rings, don't worry, you'll be able to cover it with a strategically placed flower or your barn or your birdhouse. Um, so just know that mistakes are okay. Um, they can be hidden very easily in one of these um, type of landscapes. And again, I'm gonna come about two, three quarters of the way down my canvas and that, I'm just ballparking it. You, can, you might come a little bit farther than mine. Um, or not as far, it's totally up to you. Down here, it doesn't have to be a clean line either uh, because it's gonna be um, intermingling with what I'm gonna refer to as like the meadow area later. So you don't need to um, worry about it being a super clean line. And then again, I'm just kind of going all the way up to my skyline and you can get some of those, um, some of those colors to kind of overlap your sky a little bit. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So when you get done with this step, you're gonna wash and dry this bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the, um, the vibrant ground area on our, for our meadow down below. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. The three colors I'm gonna be using are yellow, green, and rust. Um, and I say it distinctly in that order because that's the order we'll use them in. Um, it's actually yellow to green to rust back to yellow, but you'll see what, I, what I'm talking about. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put some yellow on my brush, kind of a good amount, and then I'm gonna do what I refer to as chaotic vertical stripes. So I'm just gonna really quickly kind of get my brush to go up and down. I'm not, I don't want it to be perfect, but I do want some to go all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. You can even overlap it into that background um, area a little bit. So I did yellow. Now I'm not washing my brush and I'm going into green. And again, I picked up a good amount of it. And I'm gonna do the same kind of chaotic type stripes. And they don't have to be systematic. That's why I use the word chaotic because this is, this is mother nature. She does not tend to be systematic, especially in, in my little world that I live in. And then now that I have green, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that burnt sienna and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do some chaotic stripes. And then once I get that chaos going with those three colors, now I'm not gonna wash my brush again and I'm gonna pick up yellow. So I went yellow to green to rust back to yellow. And the yellow is going to be what I refer to as like my blending color. So I have a bunch of yellow on my brush and I'm almost kind of filling in the gaps with that yellow, the, cause I've got a good amount on my brush. So I'm kind of filling in those gaps and then I'm gonna just loosely blend so I don't have any vacant spots in my canvas. And you're gonna run into wet 
burnt sienna, you're going to run into wet green. It's okay. That's what this is meant to do. It's meant to just kind of get these colors to look like they're 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 living together. You know, they've they've all kind of they're just different hues of the grass that we're seeing in the meadow back there. And if you find that you've run out of paint or it's kind of too dry for you, look for thick spots to utilize that wet paint or just pick up more paint. So I'm just kind of methodically going across here, filling in these little spaces, and some spaces are gonna have more of the burnt sienna, some are gonna have more green, and that's what this is meant to do. It's meant to have a nice assortment of all of these colors, um, and you do wanna make sure that you don't have any vacant canvas between your um, grassy area and that background area. Um, because we're not really gonna be going back to this background. Um, we'll probably be able to hide some of it with flowers and stuff, but this is definitely a, a shot where you wanna get the whole canvas covered. And then we are gonna switch brushes to your medium round brush. So when you get this all nice and colored in, you're going to put your big brush away, probably in your water cup, and take out your medium round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we are going to outline our barn and our birdhouse. We're gonna use our medium round brush and we're gonna use burnt sienna or rust as our color that we're gonna to use to outline. So I'm just gonna walk you through one line at a time. I'm gonna do my barn first and then I'm gonna do my birdhouse. My barn is gonna come about a third of the way over um, from the left hand side and it's gonna go almost down to my meadow area, maybe a little bit shy of that, and it's gonna go just about up to the top of my um, where my sky hits. So I'm gonna take rust paint, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a horizontal line from here to about maybe three or four inches in, or excuse me, maybe three inches away from the center. So in order to make this line kind of straight without um, using a ruler or anything like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark over on the left-hand side. I can use my brush as a measuring tool and I'm gonna come all the way over to wherever I want the end of that roof to, to be and I'm gonna make a mark at the same height and then I'm gonna connect those two like that. Now I'm gonna make the top of a triangle coming off of here. Um, it doesn't have to be super perfect. You don't want it to come too, too far down because this is in essence gonna be um, the bottom part of your roof. But the wider you make the bottom pieces, the, the wider the front of your barn is gonna be. So if I do something like that, I'm gonna do another one on this side in a similar angle, but I'm gonna make it just a little bit higher on my canvas. This way it's gonna make it look like it's tipped a little bit, like at we're gonna give it a good perspective. So it's just a little bit shorter or higher on my canvas than this one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from this corner and make another horizontal line going to the end of my canvas, like that. And now I'm gonna make two vertical lines from this corner and this corner and I'm gonna bring them down just shy of my meadow area. Um, so I'm just gonna go from this corner and I'm gonna come straight down and just shy of my meadow area. And I'm gonna do the same for this one, only I'm gonna make it a little bit higher on my canvas than this one. So that way, again, it's gonna make this look like it's tipped. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of perspective on it. So something like that, and again, just a little angle. I am not gonna do outlines on the bottom of my barn because I want there to be like a grassy look at the bottom. And now I'm gonna do my um, birdhouse. So how I'm gonna do this, the birdhouse is meant to look like it's in your grass. So it doesn't matter how large or small your birdhouse is in relationship to your barn because it's in the grass and it's in the foreground. So perspective wise, it really doesn't matter how big or small it is. Um, so how I do mine is I'm gonna do a small horizontal line that's gonna be maybe an inch or two 
away from um, where my sky is. And this horizontal line is going to be maybe about an inch and a half wide. Then I'm going to do a slightly diagonal line that's going to meet this mark here. Then I'm going to do three vertical lines and each one is going to get taller and taller. So I'm going to do the one on the left. This one's going to be maybe two inches high. The next one is going to be just a little bit taller than that one and it's going to come down to this point here. And again, don't worry about your lines being super perfect because we're going to be painting over these. And then this one's going to be a good amount taller than this one and it's going to go way into my sky. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this one to this one and I'm going to overshoot it and I'm going to go uh, past this one here with a diagonal line. Just past it there. I'm going to do a horizontal and then a diagonal and then a horizontal <laughs> line here. This is probably the trickiest line of the whole of the whole painting. So I'm going to go horizontal, diagonal, and horizontal. That's going to make it look like there's kind of like a little broken roof to it. And then I'm going to do a diagonal line from here back to here and it's going to be at the same height as this um, corner piece here. So I'm just going to take this from here and I'm going to go at a diagonal line. And when I feel it's about the same height as this one, then I stop my line and I'm going to connect these two. And again, don't worry about your line being perfect because we're totally going to be painting over that. This is just meant to be an outline. And then I'm going to make two diagonal lines coming from um, the bottom of my birdhouse. You don't want this to be too, too diagonal, just kind of a little bit of a slight diagonal from maybe about this area and you just get it to go into your grass somewhere. And then I'm going to do one a little bit to the left of that and into the grass. And that's all we're going to do for the um, outline of your barn and birdhouse. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are coloring the main coat for the barn and the birdhouse. I'm going to be using my medium round brush and the three colors I'm using are black, white, and burnt sienna. And I'm going to do the side and the front of my barn and my birdhouse first and then I'll put the roofs on last and anytime you can do the, the post I'll probably do that when I do the side and the front. Um, so I like my buildings to, my rustic buildings like these are, or structures, to look like they have almost a shadow underneath their roofs. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with black paint on any particular section. The trick to this is these sections that you have made, as long as you get each one a different shade from the other, you'll be able to tell that there's different sides of these buildings. The biggest trick is just at this corner, you've got to have this piece of the building a little bit different shade than this piece of the building. And of course your roof has to be a different shade too. So by doing this shadowy thing that I'm starting with, that's going to help to kind of delineate um, sections, so to speak. So I'm going to start with black paint on my brush. And what I do is I outline the top of that particular section. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm picking up rust and what I'm doing is I'm going to be pulling down this black and rust paint while it's still wet. And once I have that pulled down, now I can start introducing like black and white and I'm really doing stripes. That's kind of the main brush stroke that I use for this particular step. Um, if you feel that you're, you're going along and all of a sudden you're using too much pink or too much rust and white and it ends up looking kind of pinky, um, the trick to that is either add more white or you could introduce some of that yellow color. So if this is going too, too pink on you, feel free to start introducing either, um, you know, 
black or white or more of the yellow or whatever you need to do. Um, but sometimes if you are using the rust and the white, it can get away from you and end up looking a little pinky. So that's a way that you can counteract it. And I'm just kind of doing these stripes until I get this entire area covered in. And then I'm just gonna to go to my next section. So I don't wash my brush. I'm gonna just start with some black paint. And I'm gonna kind of outline underneath my roof line. Then I'm gonna go and pick up rust or burnt sienna and start pulling this down in, these stri in a striping kind of fashion. When I get to this corner here, I'm gonna use a little bit more white so you can see the difference between the side of the building and the front of the building. And then I'm not worried what happens when I hit that grass because again, we want it kind of uneven looking. Um, I like these buildings also to have a little bit of a gray tone because to me, this is just kind of rustic, old wood that's been weathered for years and years and years. So it's gonna take on that grayish tone. So don't be afraid if it starts going gray on you, that's, that's fine. The richer, the um, burnt sienna kind of looks, that's gonna make it look a little bit more like a newer barn. But if you start going into that, um, you know, real gray tone, that's just gonna make it look like it's an older barn. You know, it's, it's had a longer life and it's, it's lived, a, lived a good life. Um, so now I'm gonna go and do the sides of this because I can see the difference between that front and the side. So I'm gonna go right onto my little birdhouse and this is gonna be the underside of this piece of roof. I'm gonna pick up some rust, pull, start pulling this down as it's drying pull down in these little stripes. I'm gonna put some white on my brush now to get this bottom. My goal also is to pretty much hide that outline that we created. Um, that really was just so you had something to go from. So you have an outline to kind of guide you through the shapes of these, of, of these sections. Um, you don't want it to, by the time you're done with this, you don't want it to end up looking like each piece is outlined by that rust color. Again, that was just intended as um, a guide for you to allow you to see these particular sections and to get your, um, your structures into shape. So again, I started that section with black at the top. I put rust on my brush to start pulling it down. And now I'm gonna go and put a little bit of white on my brush to get this bottom part. And I'm gonna start pulling it up into that just so I can have kind of almost a clean bottom here. And I'm just kind of going up and down in this striping fashion. And if you end up blending more than you want to, just let it dry for a minute and you can come back with, with blending. I'm gonna do my post Right now, since I'm here, I'm picking up some black. Gonna start up at the top with the black. Gonna pull it down a little bit because this can this can really be shadowed because it's underneath your your birdhouse. I'm picking up some rust and I'm just gonna kind of get this colored in. And I'm just gonna get it to um, disappear in my grass. I really don't need it to be anything fancy at the bottom. If you want it to look square, you can take a touch of white and kind of give just like a line going down one side of it or down, you know, almost like the middle of it. And that'll give you the illusion that's square. Now I'm gonna do my roofs. I'm gonna make my roofs a lighter tone. You could make your roofs black if you wanted to, but it's the same colors. It's white, black, and rust. So again, I want that line at the top to disappear, my outline, so I'm making sure that I cover it. I'm starting with white on my brush, but again, I did not wash my brush. I do wanna kinda of get this edge to look like it's you know, kind of on the edge of the roof. So I'm just gonna go a little bit slower here. Just get that edge there. And for me, 
when I, so I, so it doesn't look like an outline there. I'm going to work this paint when it's wet. So I've got my, the diagonal line and then I just start pulling it over to the left. And I want this to, you know, again, just look like a rustic roof. So it's going to have streaks of gray and streaks of brown in it. Um, but I'm using a horizontal brush stroke as opposed to the vertical brush stroke that I was using earlier. So again, you can get this to be as light or as dark as you want. I'm going to go a little bit slower as I do my edge here. And I have a good amount of paint on my brush when I'm doing these edges. That way I can, it stays nice and fluid for me. And I always keep my eye on the prize, which is wherever my brush is headed. So if I start here, I'm always looking at that end spot. So that's, you know, that through the years has just been a lifesaver for me trying to get these lines semi straight. Um, so just know that that, you know, we all end up finding our own tricks as to what makes our paintbrush work the way that we want it to. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more white on the top just so it really looks like it's a nice sunshiny day. And again, it doesn't have to be a solid color. You can have pops of, of bright white and pops of gray on there. Totally up to you. Um, if it is one solid color, you might lose some of the, you know, the um, lifelike appearance of it. And then I'm going to go right on to doing my roof on my on my birdhouse and again I'm just going to start with white on my brush oh, I might have had a little rust on there too I definitely want to hide that um, burnt sienna outline and I think I want this one to be look like it's a piece of wood weathered wood so I'm going to definitely add a lot of gray to this roof here but again just kind of getting rid of that um, that outline from the from the burnt sienna. I'm going to add a touch of black onto my brush now so I can get a little bit of a gray look going on here. And then we are going to use the small brush for the next step. So once you get... Actually, no, let's use our big um, bristle brush for the next step. So once you get the the main uh, coat on these structures. You can put your medium brush away in your water cup and you can take out your large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to making stems. We're gonna be using our large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black and green. Um, and the goal here is I want to have I'm going to call them stems, but they're really, um, they're going to be stems, but it, you also want to have it kind of thicker at the bottom. Um, you don't just need a stem for every flower. We're going to make it kind of full. Um, but I am going to initially just make stems. For me, I'm going to make these stems up to where I think the bottom of the flower is going to be. So if I want a big flower over here, I'm only going to put my stem to here. If I want a big flower up here, I'm only going to put my stem to here because I, I don't want to run the risk of these stems um, being able, you being able to see them through the flower. So I'm only going to bring the stems up to the bottom of my flower. So I know that I'm going to have some flowers over here. So when I do my stems, I'm just going to bring them up into um, probably the bottom of the barn. Plus I have a door I'm going to be putting on and some windows. So I want to be careful that I preserve those areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put black and green on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to start with um, I, what I like to do, one more tip. I like to kind of squish my brush in the side of my palette. That way it's going to bring my bristles together. I really want this to be kind of on the messier side, but I also don't want it to be out of control for me. So I'm just going to kind of start over here and I'm going to kind of just dot on here in a chaotic, I don't want it to look systematic polka dots where I want to have some, some flowers. I definitely know I want to have some flowers at the bottom of my, um, 
of my birdhouse post because I want to hide that. Uh, let's see, I'm just reloading my brush here. Want to have one maybe over here. I definitely want to have a couple kind of up in this area. I like the when they're nice up in the sky. And you can see I'm bringing them down into the grass, but I'm not bringing them all the way down yet, and you'll see why in a second here. I just really want to kind of give myself a road map where I want these flowers to be. I know I want one here, so I'm going to put a stem there. I know I'm going to want a couple in front of my barn over here, so I'm just going to kind of add a couple little stems going over here and here, and then maybe I'm going to start kind of bringing these down into my grass. And I don't want to cover up all of this bright yellow and green back there. That's intended to look like sunshine on the meadow grassy area um, back there. So that's why I'm not really covering up all of that area. Um, but I do want it to be thicker or these dots that I'm making to be thicker as they get towards the bottom of my canvas. So right now I'm just kind of laying out where I want my my flowers and then once I have that then I just start kind of chaotically polka dotting down at the bottom. Now I'm not really caring I don't have a, a systematic um, thought as to oh I want a flower here or oh, I want a flower there. This is just kind of filling in the gaps at the bottom and then when you get done with this step we're going to switch brushes to that small brush. So you want to, again, have kind of so, a little bit of chaos with your, with your flowers going up, you know, your stems going up. Try not to cover up too much of your barn. Um, and make sure it's nice and filled in at the bottom. And then you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right. so. I might have said we were supposed to use our medium brush for this step, but we're going to use our small brush. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I'm using my small brush for uh, this next step, and we're putting the details on the barn and the birdhouse. The three colors I'm going to be using are black, burnt sienna, and white. And how I'm going to start this is I'm going to start with just black, and I'm going to do the all of the openings. So I'm going to use black paint and I'm gonna do a door, I'm gonna do a couple of windows, and then I'm gonna do the, oh, the bird hole opening um, in my birdhouse. So for my barn, for my door, I'm gonna make a rectangle, and if you wanna give it a little bit of perspective, you can put the top at a slight diagonal. Whatever diagonal your ground is in, you can do the same thing with the top. And then you're just going to color it in black. You could get fancy and you could do, you know, a real barn door with a big X on it. I'm just kind of making mine look like it's open, um, but you can certainly do whatever you want. And I make it uneven at the bottom so it almost looks like there's a little bit of grass overgrowth. For my windows, I'm going to do just a couple of squares or rectangles. Um, and I think my barn looks like it should have maybe two. So for me, um, I like to kind of do each kind of line next to each other. Like I'll do those two tops, then I'll do the bottoms, and then I'll do the vertical lines. And it's, that's just my own process. You, you know, you can make whatever kind of squares or rectangles you want. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of go one, two, three, four, and then I'm just going to color them in. And again, yours can be same as mine, or maybe you do a round opening. I've had a lot of people do like a round opening up at the top. Um, I mean, again, this is your painting. You could put um, a cupola on the top. You could put a windmill on, this, on the top, whatever you want. Um, so now I'm going to go do my opening for my birdhouse. This I'm going to do in the shape of like a little teardrop, and you'll see why in a second. So I've got a little teardrop. And then what I'm going to do, I don't wash my brush 
I'm going to start making um, what I call moldings around the doors. And the reason why I do this is, one, it gives it another little piece of a detail, but it also helps to clean up any edges. And all you need to do is make it a lighter color than whatever's behind. So I didn't wash my brush. I have black on my brush right now. And I'm going to pick up maybe white and a touch of my rust. And what will happen is it's going to end up being a little bit lighter of a color. And I'm just going to, I go a little bit slower on this, and I want to just kind of do these little outlines. And you know, you can, again, you can make yours as fancy as you want, um, as simple as you want, whatever is visually appealing to you. And you know, in my head, these are definitely just old rustic buildings, so they're definitely not going to be perfect. I, I had a old barn growing up and that Yay! thing definitely was not perfect. Every little piece of wood was different and it was wonky and it was crooked and it was broken. So uh, just know that your moldings and stuff definitely don't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to do the same thing around my barn door. And then if you need to or want to, if your edges on your roof are not as clean as you want them to be, now is a great time to, to do anything you want to them. I definitely like to put kind of a light edge over here so then it ends up looking like it's the edge of the roof. So I'm still just kind of, I put a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just kind of going down the edge of here. And again, you could overhang it. This is just to give it a little bit extra information. And if you needed to do the same thing on this side, you certainly could. And now what I'm going to do on my birdhouse is I put black and white on my brush. I want to give the edge of this roof almost the look of having like um, some depth to it. So I just put black and white on my brush and I'm creating like an edge to that piece of wood. Um, and I also could see that I still had a little bit of the um, rust showing. So this helps me to get rid of that as well. And black and white is just going to give you, you know, a complement to whatever, to the, to the rooftop itself. And if you needed to, you could certainly um, do the same at the bottom edge if you felt like you could put a little piece of molding just to clean it up because, you know, somebody made this birdhouse in their garage, so they probably put little moldings everywhere to make sure that it stayed nice and secure. And then I'm going to put a little bit of white at the top of my birdhouse or the the opening and this is going to make it look like there's a little piece of like this little piece of wood is almost like broken that the little birds have have chipped at it and made it um you know a little rustic and bent and stuff and you can you can fiddle with it and play with it as much as you want you could even put a little perch on there if you wanted to but that is all I'm going to do for the details on my barn and the birdhouse we're going to use our large brush for the next step so get ready for that all right so we are on to the fun flowers so I'm going to use my large brush uh, the colors that I'm going to use are magenta and white. And if I'm feeling fancy, I might do a little bit of blue too. Um, you can really have a whole bunch of fun with these flowers. You could do green flowers or yellow flowers. You could mix your colors and make different shades of purple. If you use that magenta and the blue, you could kind of pre-mix and make different shades. Um, but I am going to just you know, I'm going to start with magenta. Um, I'm going to follow it up with white. How I do these flowers, they are imaginary flowers. <laughs> and if you have, if you follow my painting um, series, I typically just make imaginary flowers. I have a couple in my pocket that look like real flowers, like roses and daisies, but today we're imaginary. Um, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take 
the magenta color and I'm using a lot because I kind of want it to stay wet for a while. So I'm picking up a lot and the, the generic shape of these flowers is going to be kind of um, almost like a cone. Um, I'm just dotting and I'm making the bottom of it wide and the top of it kind of pointy and maybe a little curved. Um, I definitely wanna have different sizes of these flowers, so I don't wanna get trapped in making them all look exactly the same. You can put some on top of your stems, so don't feel like you just have to put them at the end. So if I want, I can put one kind of in through this area. Maybe I'm gonna put one, a little one over here. I definitely want to put a couple on top of my barn, maybe a little one here. And again, I'm just using the main or the darker shade, the darker color right now. As After I get these all kind of in place, I will start to use a little bit of white on the ends of them um, to give them a highlight portion to it. But right now I'm just kind of placing them. I am, as I get down towards the uh, deeper part of the grass, I'm gonna do less like the actual shape and just kind of sporadically dot um, some littler ones, like maybe some little baby ones down in the grass. Um, but again, I don't want to fall victim to making every single one look exactly the same and or equally spaced apart. So I definitely will, you know, make little clusters. I'll make them different shapes. Maybe this one isn't as pointy as that one. Maybe I've got, you know, a really huge one in through here, making it look like it's super close to us. Um, you have to hide the bottom of your post. So just, you know, you can put just a couple of little dotted ones down there. Um, maybe I've got a really giganto one over here that, you know, maybe goes off my canvas a little bit. Again, these flowers are in our face. They're really close. Um, you can have as many as you want. You can have them going in different directions. You can have them, you know, flying off the, the side of your canvas. Um, have as many as you want. But once you get that main layer on there, I'm not going to wash my brush and I'm just going to pick up a bunch of white. And what I do is while my paint is still wet, I'm going to dot the top of every flower with a big kind of chunk of white. And I'm not doing, I'm not blending it right now. I'm just kind of dotting it. Um, what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me, once I get all these dots on here, I'm gonna come back and just lightly um, blend that top dot into the rest of the flower. We're gonna do one more over here. Maybe this one gets a couple because that one's a big one. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I'm not overloaded with white. And I'm gonna just take what I have for the white here and just lightly dot it partially into the rest of the flower or into you know part of that flower. And that way I keep a dark edge down at the bottom and I have a nice bright white part or bright light um, from like the sun up at the top. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. And you can see how I'm going. Because I used thick paint for the magenta, this allows me to just kind of lightly tap that white paint down into the flower a little bit. Maybe this one has a couple of flowers sitting next to each other. There we go. And then I, I'm not over blending. I'm really just kind of gently tapping it from the tip of that flower down into the rest of the flower a little bit. If you over blend, what'll happen is you're gonna, a couple of things. One, you could end up with a solid color, which you might like. Um, and two, you might end up 
seeing through that flower. It'll be translucent. So you might, if you dot too much, you might pull too much of the paint off of the canvas. So if that happens, just back off of it for a minute, kind of recoup, um, and then go back and dot probably more of the magenta on top of it, um, and then kind of redo the white again. But, you know, if, if this is your first time doing this type of technique, it might take a couple shots or a couple tries to get the right quantity of paint um, to make it so it's not see-through. And, you know, you might have a different brand of paint than I do. So maybe yours is much thicker and, and covers better than mine. So you might get it in, in one, one shot. But this is just, you know, kind of a work in progress. You, you make these flowers as beautiful as you want. And if you can incorporate different colors, I've had people do blue in here. I've had people do the yellow flowers or peach or orange or whatever you want. I'm just kind of looking over this, see if there's any more I want to do. I think I'm going to dot in a couple of little, a couple of little more babies down here. Um, and when you get this step all nice and done, we are going to use the tiny brush, your small brush, for the final step. So once you get all your flowers, put your big brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the last step. All right, so the last step to any good painting, well, any painting for that matter, is to sign it. So I'm going to, I usually sign mine bottom left or the bottom right. Today I'm going to sign mine in the bottom left. I'm using my small round brush. I'm going to use black paint. I'm going to be signing my initials. You could sign your full name. You could sign it with the date. You could use a symbol. Whatever works for you is fine by me. Uh, and that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>